Hey guys, what's going on? Um, we have a puzzle this time between Karpov and Nunn. Um, some great players, especially Karpov. What is going on? So, Black wants to make use of the d4 square. So let me just give a quick example of what I think is happening here. Pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Something like this. There's moves like knight to d4. Well, okay, now this move wins. But okay, there's also moves like rook takes b3 there. So just something to keep in mind. Um, that knight on d4 can be annoying. I mean, bishop h3 is a thought to try to get rid of the knight. But it also seems a little a little shaky to me. Let's, let's see what is going mm -hmm. on. F4 seems not so great. I mean the rook on the rook on c6 though, it's like really unfortunately placed. So like if he takes on f4, we could take with a pawn and maybe the bishop on that diagonal could someday be good after e5. I mean, white seems to have an advantage, just because our, we have more space. I'm just trying to find a way to make something more serious out of this position. I mean, b4 is certainly interesting. And let me demonstrate why. If b4, pawn takes pawn, b5. Let's assume he takes. Pawn takes. And now his rook has very few places to go. And if here we have a move like b6, and then the rook on c3 is a little... doesn't have many places to go. Maybe queen d2 first, I don't know. A queen b2 like might trap the rook almost. Doesn't quite, though. There's some problems, though. Like, for number one, this is interesting. Simply sacrificing an exchange. Although probably it's, it's decent for white. But the knight on c5 is, is pretty strong. So I don't know. I don't know about that move. Um, Bishop h3. Is it a good trade that we want to make? Or not? It doesn't feel right to me at all. Because also, if we capture the knight, we could take with a pawn sometimes and, and take away our d5 square, which is annoying. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do. I don't know, maybe f4. I'm kind of leaning towards f4 now. Just kind of opening things up, or opening our bishop up. Um, his e5 pawn's really strong, controlling the d4 square in a lot of key positions. If, if f4 pawn takes a5, that's the one thing I, gotta, I haven't worked out yet. <laughs> and it's pretty important to work out. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not good because of that. Although we do get the open file, we can take on e5 and play at rook d7. But I'm not sure. Um, oh, we could also go f5 and f6. Still, something about it feels fishy to me. I'm going to demonstrate why. Pawn takes pawn. f5, knight to d4. And if, if bishop takes, pawn takes... We can't take with a rook because bishop b6. And if f6, I mean, we can, you can just go g6 now or g5 or something. g6, I guess. Although the position looks good to me. I mean, it's complicated stuff, though. It's hard for me to evaluate, even with the position on the board. So I'm not, I'm not so sure what to do. Not so sure. It's definitely like the most um, ambitious move. And I mean, it looks like for sure he should take on a5 there. We go f5. He goes knight to d4. We can also sack an exchange in that type of position. But it's stupid. <laughs> um, Yeah, it doesn't look good to sack the exchange. All right, I'm going to show one more idea, though. Um, f4, take f5, knight d4. 
I mean, I'm looking at this move with bishop h6 ideas. And if like king f8, f6 kind of opens things up a bit. Um, it's a very risky move though, f4. But it, what would I do in a game is the big question. Because sometimes when you're solving a puzzle, you end up playing a move because diff this is a little different because it is a puzzle. Like f4 is a very ballsy move. It requires a lot of um, a lot of calculation and not calculation, but it requires a lot of evaluation and confidence. You know, so it's hard to play a move like that quickly because it's very double-edged. On the other hand, if we take on b6 and he takes, and we do all that stuff, um, we can't. We don't want his knight coming to d4. It's just not a, not a good situation to give up. We give up this bishop. His knight owns this square, and that's just the way it is. So I'm just going to try f4, whatever. I was wrong, obviously. Is it b4? Yeah, it is b4. I'm so stupid, you know. I had the right answer right away, and why didn't I play it? Play stupid ass f4. Why can't I evaluate chess positions? At least it likes f4 too. It gives me some hope in my <laughs> in my life. I was looking at this mostly. Now it likes knight knight c5. Okay, but like. Whatever, man. <laughs> uh, b4, pawn takes b5. And it says a takes, c takes, and white's just better. It suggests rook c5, and then we just take. I mean, like, this is what's really stupid. I saw this variation. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yet I ended up playing some different kind of unclear move. What the hell is wrong with me? Really, like, it's just embarrassing. So stupid, it's like a joke. Uh, B4 is a better move. I mean, it just kind of creates problems in, in blacks. I saw this move right away, and I don't play it. Like, what, what is wrong with my brain? Do you see what's going on? Uh, it's like my thought my thought processes are, like, very... I mean, on the other hand, it is a puzzle, and I'm trying to, like, think for the puzzle. But still, like, B4 and B5 is pretty... It was obvious to me because I said it like right away, <laughs> and then somehow I didn't do it. I never gave any reason really why I didn't do it. I just didn't. It's just ridiculous. This has happened in other puzzles too. All right, I can't eat breakfast till I, I, I finish all the puzzles for the month. I got two more. See you later. Bye bye.